Okay, hi guys. So um, I have another interview I'm doing for today. Um, and it's actually somebody that I know uh, previously because we've worked together in a short film. Uh, you might recognize her from the first short film that I ever did for this channel. Um, and in about a month or so, we're trying to set up uh, another shoot uh, for, for, for another short film. Um, but yeah, so anyway, like I said, as is custom for this channel for these interviews, I'll just let the, the guests introduce themselves. So Kashira, if you want to introduce yourself. Yes. Hi, everyone. My name is Kishira or Kiki, if you know me personally. Um, my day-to-day -day life, I'm a broker's coordinator for a commercial real estate firm. Um, during my free time, I consider myself a serial entrepreneur, founder, and CEO of an investment company called New, which translates to us in Somali, as well as a wholesale beauty supply store. Um, I also love to act on my free time and produce um, and last but certainly, certainly not least, I'm a student always. I'm currently a master, I'm a candidate for my master of science in integrated design, business, and technology. Wow, yeah, that's that's a that's a mouthful right there. That's that's good though. I mean, it's very you're very, you know, that's certainly a lot more than than I actually knew about you. So that's good uh to to find all all, all that stuff. It sounds it sounds really cool. Um, yeah, I did that so much. <laughs> Yeah, it, just it's love fun. to stay busy. Yeah, well, that's good. That means you're ambitious, so that's really good. Um, so yeah, so um, so just kind of moving a little bit, not like unrelated note. Um, so obviously this is part of you know interview series that I do where I like to interview a lot of you know different actors, actresses. Um, and you know pretty much like I like to highlight you know more so you know you know, different, different actors, actors of color, basically, so to speak, you know, a lot of people who don't normally get a lot of, you know, attention, such as, you know, Asian actors, Hispanic actors, or, you know, uh, black actors as well, just like actors in general, you know what I mean, um, who are very talented, but like I said, go, sort of get very marginalized uh, by the media, and which I think is unfair, so that's why I enjoy doing this type of stuff, um, so if you could tell me a little bit, like, I know, you know, like I said before, we've worked together, so I'm, I'm familiar with you in that regard, but I'm not familiar with you and how you sort of got started and what got you interested into acting and all that stuff. So if you could talk a little bit about that. Yes. Um, okay. So for me, acting actually was something that I used to always do. Like in my free time, I actually started back in high school. Um, I did a play. I was in concert choir in a sense. Um, and one of like my teachers at the time, she was like doing a play for I think it was hairspray. I've been, I've done a few. Yeah, it was hairspray. And um, so she asked me, she was like, yeah, you should like audition for it. And at the time I did not really want to audition cause I couldn't like really see myself being on the stage let alone theater, um, but I did it. And it was like the first time where I really felt like I was free. Like I felt like I didn't have to worry about like just always expressing who I am but for once I can kind of like just branch out and become like another persona like I feel like with acting is storytelling so with acting like you're able to kind of you're kind of like able to tell not only the past but the present and so with that theater is um its own different like you know category of like everything being right in and there but film more importantly you have like this aspect of being able to really just take in something that you've read and kind of bring it to life and so I was like I just loved it um that was like one of my first times where I felt like I was able to like take something that I read and make it mine um and so I kind of took a break from acting. Um, as you can see, I kind of like branched off into a business. When I went um, in my undergrad, I started to kind of gain a love for business. Um, but it wasn't until after I graduated that I had more free time. And so that's when I started to kind of get back into um, acting and kind of hone in on my skills. And yeah, that's kind of where we met. <laughs> yeah. And um, again, like for everyone who is not, um, who's, uh, not up to date with the channel, uh, so like I said before, me, me and Kishara, we, we worked together a few months ago back in March. Um, so a little bit earlier this year. Um, but, you know, like I said, we're trying, I'm trying to set something else up. Hopefully, you know, everything goes smoothly with that. Um, but if you're not familiar with it, go check it out. Um, it's the very first, it's available to watch on my channel. Uh, if you go under AMBW Original Short Films, it's the very first one. I think it literally says short film number one um, included there in the title. So um you will see that that short film that we put together um yeah sure you know like i said i had a really good time working with you on that um and
and you know obviously from the view count and all the comments on it stuff you know um you know there's there's a lot of people who actually you know really enjoyed it as well um and they definitely you know are have been asking to 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 basically do like you know a, a part two or whatever which is uh which is the one that i'm trying to plan um so that's good so i you know i mean like i said i i think um when it comes to you know sort of this type of content and and like making it for for this particular audience I think it's something that, um, you know, the audience, like, they definitely want to see because there's not a whole lot of, you know, media representation or anything like that, uh, specifically covering this kind of, you know, subject of, you know, like interracial romance and stuff like that. Um, I mean, so, you know, it, it is sort of just, just without going too long, it is something that, um, that you see, you know, a lot, maybe not like a lot, but you do see it, um, you know, in, in the actual, you know, world and um, everyday life. But, you know, as far as like media coverage, it's not a whole lot. So I enjoy doing that. Um, what was I going to say? I, I had another question. So um, in your time, in terms of acting and all that stuff, um, for me personally, I'm asking this because I'm not an actor, so I wouldn't know what it's like. But I've heard um, sort of mixed things in terms of, you know, sort of like minority actors and whatnot, like sort of the, the issues that one might face or, you know, I mean, all that stuff. And obviously, you know, it's not the same for everyone. It varies from person to person. But um, can you tell us like a little bit have there been sort of any experiences, whether positive or uh, or like negative, that you've dealt with that might made you feel uncomfortable or anything like that when it you know, when it comes to someone sort of like evaluating you and maybe like trying to like stereotype you or anything like that or like assuming anything like that at all? Yes. <laughs> so keep the answer um, very simple and straightforward. Um, I think in general, when coming into acting, especially when you're new, um, you come into it with like an open mindset of like really trying to learn, be hands on, um, as well as like ask a lot of questions. But with that being said, like um, being a Black woman, sometimes when you're like coming at a situation in like a learning aspect, some people take it all, they take it as you like either flirting or they'll instantly have um, like just this idea of like using, I guess your questions as an in in order to kind of like hit on you. And I really do feel like black women in general, we're very like fetishized in a way, like um, a lot of people just have fetish fetishes of like black women. And I think that really like leads into how, um, you know, black women are approached in a sense. Um, there's been times where I've like legit just been like minding my business, like reading a script or like reading a book or like waiting in like the common, you know, common area before it's time to like go on, go on set or anything. And, um, a guy would just like come up to me and you'll think that like it would just be a normal conversation they just want to get to know me ask you know see who I am what do I do outside of acting or what have I done you know in terms of acting but now the like I'll say like a few seconds into the conversation they're asking me if I'm in a relationship or asking me like what guys I've met you know while being in Los Angeles or anything like that and it's just like sometimes it's very hard um, to draw that line or distinguish the line between business um, and my, you know, my personal life, um, because people, when they see me, they're most likely going to ask about it. And it's just very hard sometimes, um, especially when it comes to like being on a set, because people are more, they're very used to just like talking and being like very free spirited and things like that. So that line is very thin. <laughs> so has any, uh, have you, um, has anyone actually ever like flat out like asked you about or trying to make a move on you or anything like that? Because I mean, obviously, you know, that that sort of thing, you know, I'm aware of and, you know, I've been raised not to not raised, but like taught not to do that. So I know better. But like, have you ever has anything actually any sort of incident like that ever happened where like a guy or maybe even, you know, like just anybody tried to blatantly try to make a move or actually, you know, try to ask you out and like that like never straightforward um i've always had guys they're like oh let's connect what's your instagram what's your ig um i'll give them my instagram next thing you know they're in my inbox asking me like when are we going to link up <laughs> and i'm just like sir <laughs> this was not what you know this was for it was just to stay up to date with each other um but yeah no one has like actually you know while we're working tried to just straight straight up like ask me out it's always been more so like, you know, friendly, and then later on, they'll either try. Hmm. Well, yeah, well, that's unfortunate. Um, but, uh, but, yeah, but so, I guess, you know, yeah, that, that, yeah, that does suck. But, 
I guess more on the positive side, like what, uh, I guess like what, what in terms, you know, for the most part, what have you gotten out of your experiences on set and, you know what I mean, acting and anything like that? Like, what are the things that you've taken away from, you know, like your different experiences uh, so far? Yeah, um, honestly, it's been a few different things in general. Um, well, for one, I've been able to work. I guess for me, my biggest thing is just like gaining experience. I think with acting, most people think that you come in it just being great. Whereas like most people who are in the industry kind of know that like it's a forever thing. You're like always growing, which is why you have to like take different classes. You have to like perfect the skill as much as possible. And so for me, I've just really just, found love in like the process. I'm like really learning how to kind of just take take it day by day. And so some of my favorite experiences have been like, honestly, just being on set. Um, I just had this past um, weekend, actually. Yeah, I was on a set for like a Christmas film and just being on set with other people, seeing like actors who are like more experienced than me, like being able to talk to them, ask questions. That's something that I truly appreciate because like I said, I feel like I'm a student always. Like I'm always the person who's gonna like ask like, oh, like what made you do that? Or like, how are you um, able to, you know, I don't know, just asking, you know, asking questions that really like kind of makes me understand the skill a little bit more. Um, but in general, just like actually having time to be on set has been like my biggest, I don't know, I think thing that I'm like appreciative of, I guess. Yeah, well, yeah, that's good. Um, yeah, I mean, I feel like, you know, when, when you're, when you're, you know, doing this sort of thing, like it helps to know, you know, it helps to have, like, you know, sorry, it helps to actually be really passionate about it and really interested in it. So, so that definitely, you know, that definitely sounds like you are, you know, pursuing it uh, to, you know, it's basically, you know, sounds like you're pursuing it to its full extent, which is really good. Um, and I can tell just from working with you that you are a very focused, dedicated person. So that's really good. Um, and like I said, the short film that we did a while back was, is, is still probably the most viewed, um, I think up until a couple of days ago, it was the most viewed uh, video on my channel. For some reason, one of the other ones that's not a short film is getting over like 10,000 uh, views. Um, so I don't know. I mean, I don't want to say it might go viral, but I wouldn't be surprised if it did, but that'd be kind of random. But no, I, I, really, I enjoy I enjoy working with you and, you know, I look forward to, you know, the future. Um, so sort of shifting away again, because, you know, I wanna, I'm going to end this interview very soon, but, you know, you, you're, you're, you're a very busy person, but um, just the last couple of questions. Uh, the number one, you know, um, you haven't touched on this yet, but, you know, in terms of like dating and all that stuff, um, that's something that I have, well, for obvious reasons, I don't know anything about you and all that stuff because um, it wasn't pertinent. It wasn't related to anything. But uh, for the channel, I guess people want you know that's one of the main focuses for this channel is you know sort of the focus on you know dating and relationships and all that stuff. So can you tell us um, just what what is your experience? Because like I said, I don't know anything about you in that regard. Like you know, have you um, you know have you dated you know like outside of your race at all and anything like that? Um, so I have not actually, I haven't had the chance to date outside of my race. Um, I have spoke to guys outside of my race, but nothing where I would like say it was very serious in a sense. Okay. Um, oh, I'm sorry, did you want to say something else? Uh, yeah, I guess I was just going to say, um, in terms of just like relationships in general, I feel like I'm a very, um, I could be assertive, but at the same time, I'm very laid back. And so with that, I feel like most guys, they're, I, I guess I don't never really get to the place where like we're, we'll be dating unless the guy is um, very confident in a sense, because I like someone who's like willing to like just actually have a conversation. Because like I said, um, having fetishes for Black women is a real thing. It's a real issue. And it's things that a lot of Black women has to have to deal with. And because of that, like, the way that a guy approached me really matters. So, like, there's been times where, like, a random guy um, outside of my race, they'll, like, approach me um, and, like, a, you're beautiful. And I'm like, okay, thank you. Um, but outside of that, they is there's really no type of like substance to the conversation. And so after like they tell me that, I'm just like, okay, thank you. Um, but what what next? You know, um, I feel like sometimes it can be kind of hard to find find a guy outside of our race, outside of my race, who kind of like 
want to get to know me for me and not to just say, hey, oh, I'm talking to a black woman or hey, like this is a beautiful black woman who I may or may not be able to get to know or date or something like that. So just, you know, I guess wanted to take a step back to really find someone who who's willing to go all in, in a sense. Um, and that's not to say that like we're about to get married next week, but like, you know, um, a person who's like willing to just be confident in the fact that like, this is something new for both of us. Um, Cause I think that can become an issue down the line. So would you say that's one reason why you haven't, um, you know, yet, you know, done that, you know, whereas like, you know, you maybe, I don't wanna say comfort zone, but like, sorry, let me rephrase the question. Would you say that is one reason why you haven't dated outside your race because of how, you know, because of how much, you know, uh, you know, guys will objectify or fetishize black women? Um, is that like your main, you know, primary concern or, you know, yeah. No, I don't think that's my primary concern. I just think everyone's experiences are different. Um, and I guess for me, <laughs> this goes way, way back in history. I'm talking like, um, we can talk about like civil war, like the legacy of like slavery and all of these different aspects of like black women um, going through sort of like this, I wanna say like, Oh, what's the word for what I want to say in the sense of like women having to go through this experience of lust and hate. Um, and when I say that, I mean like most people when they first see a black woman, of course, they're attracted to them because of like, you know, their looks or their personality or things like that. However, that's only the that's only the beginning. And so what I mean by that is that like most most women, um, when they're willing to like, you know, even date outside of their race or take the first step or go on a date, nine times out of 10 down the line, it becomes this issue of like, okay, is he even like willing to like allow me to like, you know, meet his friends or even his family or, you know, these societal expectations that are like put on a relationship right away. Um, I'm talking like, you know, people being embarrassed to in introduce, you know, a black woman to like their friends because, maybe they're like going outside of their culture or um, and, and even like when thinking about Asian relationships or I know how like most families they can kind of be like overbear overbearing or like over controlling when it when and when I'm sorry in a sense of like being like overly picky for like the person that they're willing to like introduce them to um, introduce I guess their woman to like their family um so I just think in general it's just like a lot of societal expectations that are put on a relationship right away that kind of makes it very difficult for I don't know just like the relationship relationship to succeed in general um but yeah yeah I mean I definitely agree uh like I said I've had my share of um mixed experiences dating on summer race and even dating in summer race it's not super easy at times but um Mm, okay. Um. Well, what would I say? Um. What do you? Okay, so just one more question. What are? I know you kind of touched on touched on it um briefly before, but like, sort of going out on this note or ending the interview on this note. Um. What would you say are like turn ons and turn offs for you, like in a guy? Like it doesn't matter, like. You know, it could be like any type of guy. It could be a you know black guy, Asian guy, white guy, Hispanic guy, Native American, anything like that. What are things that you think are ultimately? Or actually, you know what? No, that's a really common. Sorry, that's really common. Let me let me rephrase that. What traits do you value that you think are sort of rare in in guys? Right? Like what what sort of what is like what are your like ideal qualities um, that you know that 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 you think are important? but that may, uh, you know, a guy may or may not have, um, and, and yeah. I think in terms of um, what I look for, I guess, I really want a guy who has dignity and respect, not only for like me, but himself. I want someone who's like willing to kind of go above and beyond to be whole within because I feel like a lot of people they try to jump into relationships thinking that like their significant other is going to be the person who kind of like makes them um 
I know, I don't know, like make them whole. And I guess for me, I just want someone who's like, okay with the fact that like, we're all still growing, like, okay with the fact like there's going to be times where like, I may be busy or times where like, I say the wrong thing, but like someone who's willing to kind of like go through the journey of like, growing um because I think a lot of people come into the real like come into relationships thinking that everything is going to like always just be so perfect all, everything is just always going to be so easy and that's why we have a lot of people who like they go get married so quick a year into the relationship or two years they're divorced um and mainly because like they didn't take that time out at the beginning to like have those like to see those flaws or to have those like small like you know conversations that kind of like lead to debates and not saying that like you have to like argue but like I want someone who's willing to kind of like rip off that that shield or like that additional layer because I feel like me like I was saying as a person um I've always like been someone who's just like I just think I it takes a lot to get to know me so like I have like this exterior of like being very um like just hard or like strong or like you know um I can handle so I take on so many things to the point where like it can seem as though like I don't need a man and granted I don't because like you shouldn't need a man or you shouldn't need a woman in order to like be able to go about your day-to-day -day lives but at the same time like I want to be able to have someone who's kind of like able to be confident and be okay while life around us is changing because it's always changing I'm like always making big moves I'm always I moved across the country like you know um finding myself in terms of like my career getting more stable and things like that and so like I want someone who doesn't like have that scarcity mindset um when it comes to like the relationship or like getting to know each other from from jump um well, yeah, I think yeah, that's thank you for opening up about that. Um, what else I gonna say? I think yeah, that's pretty much all I have. Like I said, I didn't want to you know, take up too much of your time. I have to get back to work. So, um, but I appreciate you for taking the time to speak with us today. Uh, I will send you the link when this video is up, which should be later today. So I will send it to you. Um, and yeah, you know, like I said, I look forward to you know uh, collaborating with you again. Um, you know, sooner than later. I know it's kind of. Kind of sprung on everyone and kind of not really at the last minute technically but it is it is coming out sooner than later um so but I, I look forward to that and like i said everyone uh watching this video um you know if you if please uh, like comment subscribe if you haven't already uh also hit the notification bell every time i upload a new video you'll be notified of that so hit the bell and um of course on this note related to this video check out the short film that we did um it's it's worth your time and uh part two is coming part two is coming so um but yeah Katara, i want to thank you again i'm so glad that we got to do this um it's definitely worth it and so i appreciate it uh, everyone watching at home um thank you and uh, we'll see you on the next video so bye. thank you so much for having me yeah